Hello, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Masood Olia, and I'm a professor here at Ventford Institute of Technology. This is my first uh, video that I'm using the whiteboard. I'm very happy to use this technology. And uh, I also wanted to say that now that you can see my face for those people who've been following my videos, so you can get, you know, put, put a uh, face to my voice. Okay, so um, what I want to show you here is a problem that has to do with the response of to harmonic excitation of an un undamped system. So basically we have a system consisting of a mass, spring, only mass and a spring, no damping. And then this is subjected to a harmonic force, F of T. Now what does harmonic force mean? Harmonic force mean that it's either a sine wave or cosine wave. Here our F of T is F0 cosine omega DRT. F0 is the amplitude of the force, or I called it here force amplitude. Omega dr is the driving frequency or the input frequency. And these systems are very important actually because if uh, you, you guys have seen probably in another lecture that if the driving frequency is very close to the natural frequency, the system will go crazy. And that's called the resonance. And also if the driving frequency is close, or it's, uh, if it's exactly equal to natural frequency, that's, that's for a mechanical system is a disaster. If it's very close to it, we get the phenomenon of the beat frequency. Anyways, so let's get back here and we'll just draw a, a free body diagram of, of our system. So I just wanna go through this rather quickly and give you the final uh, formulation of our problem. And then I will do one example at the end. So here we have the free body diagram of our system. If we disturb this guy due to the force to the right, and we'll see the force Kx, that's the uh, force coming from the spring. Just apply the second law, F equal ma, and using the, the direction, positive direction as shown here, we'll get the following equation. Of course, mass times acceleration is mass times second derivative of x. So now this becomes our differential equation. The next step is to normalize this. Normalizing means we divide by the leading coefficient of the mass. So therefore, we get the following equation, x double dot plus omega n squared x equal to, I'm gonna call this now lowercase f0. Lowercase f0 is uppercase f0 divided by m. That's called normalized amplitude. Okay, so F0, lowercase f0 is normalized amplitude, amplitude, so this becomes F0 cosine omega drt. So this is the equation that I want to solve now. What would be the solution to this differential equation? Remember now, omega n is the natural frequency, which is defined as square root of k over m. So this k could be actually an equivalent spring or equivalent and m could be an equivalent mass. So what would be the solution to this differential equation? First of all, this is a second order differential equation because you have the second derivative and it's non-homogeneous because the right hand side is not zero. So what are we gonna do with this equation? So the solution is x as a function of time is part the homogeneous solution and the other part is the particular solution. Homogeneous solution is also known as the transient solution. And particular solution is known as the steady state solution. Those are different names also given to homogeneous and particular solution. So homogeneous solution you are pretty much familiar with. Homogeneous solution is if the right hand side is equal to zero. Homogeneous solution basically you could write it as just one amplitude A sine omega nt plus some phase angle, phi or theta, uh, which actually in our situation, it's better to write it as a1 actually sine omega nt plus a2 cosine omega nt. You guys know that anytime you have combination of sine and cosine, you could eventually m change it to a sine or a cosine with you know, different phase angle. So now, next thing we wanna do is look at the particular solution. Particular solution, basically you assume a solution exactly like your input here. So you say, okay, I have some constant A0, 
times cosine omega drt. And the way you get the particular solution, I'm not going to go through the detail of it because I don't think it's necessary to do that. Uh, as we go, as we try to plug in this back to our differential equation, we can easily solve for A0. A0 comes out to be F0, this normalized amplitude that we defined up here, divided by omega n squared minus omega dr squared. Remember, omega n is the natural frequency and omega dr is the input frequency or the driving frequency. So that becomes, the, in a way, the amplitude of the particular solution or, or a steady state solution. This is also known as the steady state amplitude, very important in design. Of course, not so much for a mass spring system, but definitely for mass spring damper, which would be something, uh, another story that hopefully I'll make a video on that too. So this is called a steady state amplitude. Okay, so now what would be the total solution of our system? The total solution of our system, x as a function of time, is a1 sine omega nt plus a2 cosine omega nt plus the particular solution, which is now f0 divided by omega n squared minus omega dr squared times cosine omega drt. Remember, part of this solution, this part is the homogeneous, and this part is the particular solution. So the next question is, how do you find these constants a1 and a2? These constants are always determined a1 and A2 are determined based on the initial conditions, the IC. Initial con con conditions typically are what? At t equals 0, position is some initial position, and the velocity x dot is some initial velocity. So those are the typical initial conditions. So if you, have, if you plug this information in here for position, and of course you need the x dot for velocity. The end result becomes, actually I can give you what a1 and a2 are equal to, and then uh, I'll tell you what the uh, final solution is going to be if x0 and v0 are equal to 0. Because we really don't need any initial position or initial velocity because system is already disturbed by a force. So this becomes actually A1 becomes V0 divided by omega uh, N, and A2 becomes actually X0 minus this uh, normalized amplitude F0 divided by omega N squared minus omega dr squared. So I'm going to uh, erase this in a minute and show you the uh, complete solution, and then I will do an example. Okay, so now that we erased uh, uh, the previous formulas, you guys remember that I said that uh, we want to now look at the overall solution, specifically when the initial conditions are zero. So x0 is zero and v0 is zero. So if we modify the equation, the equation is shown here, it would be 2f0 over omega n squared minus omega d squared. Notice that two sine waves we have here. One with a very small frequency but large uh, period. One with a large frequency relatively and a small period. And this basically is the concept of uh, beat phenomenon, uh, especially when omega n and omega d are, are very close to one another. So I just want to take this opportunity now to show you an example. Of course, this is an example. The, the, the general solution was for a translational system. This is a rotational system, and it really doesn't matter uh, if you have a translational system or rotational system. Basically, here we have a system. We have a rod, a uniform rod, whose mass is given to be equal to uh, 20 kilograms. So the mass of this uniform rod is 20 kilograms. And then you have two springs here with the same stiffness. So this rod, by the way, is six meters long, but you see it's pivoting about point A, which is two meters from the left side. Now, uh, two springs and then subjected to this harmonic force. The amplitude of this force is 10, say 10 newtons, and a frequency of uh, 
three radians per second. So this is actually your driving frequency of three radians per second. And this would be your uppercase F0. Let's not worry about uppercase F0 because we really need in our equation lowercase F0. So we try to normalize at the end. Anyways, so what I'm showing you here is that we try, try to draw a free body diagram of our system. And notice that if, you, if this guy rotates as a result of the applied force, the, har the harmonic excitation, for a small angle theta actually pivoting about A, this deformation, the stretch of this spring moving up is going to be equal to 2 theta. Remember, tangent theta and theta for a small angle are equal in radians. So that's why I just put 2 theta, 2 being the length here. And similarly, this is 3 theta. So this spring is going to compress. That spring is going to stretch. Their forces are shown here. You got to multiply k by the amount of deformation. So 200 theta here, 300 theta going in the opposite direction of the way they are disturbed. Of course, we have AX, AY. That would be the uh, reactions developed at A and the force. So how do we get the differential equation of motion? All we have to do is to take moment about A and take moment about A. That's equal to mass moment of inertia about A times angular acceleration. And direction of disturbance is always the positive direction. So the disturbance is clockwise. Now notice that I can go ahead and calculate I sub A separately. In fact, I'm going to do it right up here for you. So I sub A using parallaxis equation is I bar plus MD squared. So notice that I bar, that you get that from a table or in a problem it's given to you, is 1 half, uh, 112 ml squared plus MD squared. So remember, the mass of this guy is 20 kilograms. Uh, L is the total length of the bar, which is 6 meters. And what is D? D is the distance between the center of gravity of this guy, the center of mass, which is right here, and the axis here. So basically what we are trying to do is transfer from here to here, to the pivot point. And that's one meter, as you could see. So this comes out to be uh, actually exactly 80, and the unit should be kilograms meters squared. That's the unit of mass moment of inertia in metric system. OK, so now that I have determined uh, this moment of inertia about A, let's go ahead and apply our equation. So notice that both of these guys, the 300 theta and the 200 theta, are going to give you a moment that, that are counterclockwise about A. So both of them are negative. So we have a minus 200 theta times 2. Don't forget the 2 that you have to multiply by. And also 300 theta times 3. These are the moment arms, 2 and 3. Don't forget that you have the f of t, uh, which is going to give you actually a positive moment times 4, right, from here to point A, where we are taking moment about. And that's equal to our I sub A, which is AD times alpha. Alpha is what? Alpha is theta double dot. Now, you might have a question uh, or concern that how come I didn't include the effect of gravity here, mg? Well, the system, we are assuming this system has reached an equilibrium position and there's some deformation in the springs, static deformation in the spring. And if you do a complete analysis of a static and dynamics, the effect of gravity is a wash and it won't appear in the equation. So don't worry about gravity. Okay, so when we clean up this equation, we get an 80 theta double dot plus a 400 here and a 900 here becomes a 1300 positive when you bring it to one side. Now remember, your f of t is equal to 10 cosine 3t. So this becomes actually 40 cosine 3t. Now we are ready to normalize this. So remember, our differential equation is going to be in terms of uh, angle theta. Before I showed you x double dot and x here. But it doesn't matter. This is the angular position of the rod. Normalization now is done. We divide by the leading coefficient of the mass. So now we get a theta double dot plus this is our omega n squared now, which is the uh, 1300, or let's reduce it to 130 over 80 theta. So that's your omega n squared, or omega n is the square root of that. And look, our normalized amplitude now is 0.5, nicely. This is F0 that I'm going to use now in a minute. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and find our omega n. Omega n is the square root of 130 over 80, which comes out to be a little bit more than 4. So let's for our practical purposes say that it's 4 radians per second. It's 4.03 or something like that. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, so now, all I have to do, j just to show you, um, actually, this, if you want to find your, uh, see I have left here, our steady state amplitude. If you want to find the steady state amplitude, A0, you could, right? What is it equal to? Well, it turns out that is F0. F0 now is 0.5 normalized amplitude divided by omega n, which is about 4 or a little bit more than 4. Uh, and your driving frequency, your input frequency is 3. So 16 minus 9, that's 7.5 over 7 is roughly about 0 0.0714. And this should have units of uh, whatever we are using, meters. In this case, would be meters, actually. All right, so that's your steady state amplitude. The steady state means what? It means over a long period of time, OK? So uh, let me give you now the overall solution. The overall solution, remember, is right here. Now, of course, instead of x, we are using theta. So theta as a function of time is 2f0 over omega n squared minus omega dr squared. Now, remember, I already know what is uh, F0 divided by omega n squared minus omega dr squared. In fact, this is basically 2A0 here, right? So kind of I take advantage of that and uh, make that double. So that becomes actually a 0 0.14, 0 0.1428 if you double that, okay? Uh, times uh, sine of what? Sine of omega n minus omega dr, 4 minus 3 divided by 2, that's 1 over 2, that's a half. So one frequency is 0.5 radians per second, and this one becomes a 4 plus 3, 7 divided by 2, 3 and a half. And that's the other frequency. So this is your overall solution. Basically, if you plot this, and I'm going to try to plot it here for you, kind of. If you plot theta versus time, you should get something like this. you will see a sine, a sine wave riding on another sine wave. This is actually, the omega n, and omega n and omega d are very close to one another, actually. So you could actually see the, the beat phenomenon here. And this is actually known as a beat frequency here, uh, or uh, period of the beat, T sub b, okay? And basically, the maximum amplitude that you can get to is this number that I just got for you here. That should be 0.1428. So uh, I hope you uh, like this video and uh, hopefully come back with more examples later on. Thanks for watching.